Hello and welcome to Rural Talk. Friends, agri input companies have played a significant role in our economic transformation. With one side talking on doubling farmers' income and now government reducing dependency on China, this is a flutter in market. So to discuss on re-strategizing agri input marketing, we have with us Professor Chandra Prabhaval, Managing Director, ISK Biosciences in India, India Private Limited. The Japanese MNC, he comes with over five decades of experience in manufacturing and marketing. A serial entrepreneur, and also he's present on various company boards as an independent director. He has been teaching at various management institutes, so not wasting much time with so much of knowledge and so much of experience. Let me welcome Professor Sabar Bawal to Rural Talks. Hello and welcome Professor Sabar Bawal. Sir, you have spent five years, you had a fantastic uh, experience in marketing as well as uh, manufacturing. So could you just elaborate on your entrepreneurial journey? You have been in academics also. So can you just take us through your entire journey uh, of your five decades? Okay. Hello, Ajay. Hello, listeners. Thank you. Some of you may know me. Um, so my journey into rural marketing and agro input marketing started in 1968. So it is so it is 52 years. And how it used to happen is that my father, who was with Shell, uh, Shell put up our plant in Ghaziabad in 1966. And then I used to go with him while doing my studies in honors of economics uh, at that time. Go with him when the factory was coming up and, and assist him in the building and, and the plant. So, and then, and so we went to Abhor in 1968 when I was still a student in some ways. And uh, in, in, in Abhor Mandi, we were, we went to the bus stand to go to Malot. And the bus was full, you know, there were people sitting on the top of the bus. So the, somehow one Sardarji pulled my father inside the bus in 68. It was June, I think, same time. And there was no other place. And then the Sardarji on top of the bus on the roof pulled, put out his hand and he pulled me up on the top of the bus. So we traveled, <laughs> we traveled from Abor to Malor, 34 kilometers. And I was in air-conditioned comfort and the Sardarji put his arms around me you know, just to comfort me. And that was my first travel in rural markets mm -hmm. when I was very young, still only 19, 20 mm -hmm. years old and studying. So mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long time. And then we put up three manufacturing units in Ghaziabad, Gajrola and Jammu, uh, manufacturing, wow. uh, yeah, manufacturing crop protection chemicals and formulating them and marketing them. Mm -hmm. Another notable thing is that we were the MNC platform in India because the MNCs were, were uh, restricted by uh, FERA regulations in India at that time. Uh, trade is mm -hmm. like, only trade. So every new product, Ajay, that came into this country yeah. between 1978 and 1994 took its birth in our factory. Every mm -hmm. new product, and it was great learning experience. So we used to mm -hmm. manufacture for MNC, supply it back to them, and we built up 50% of the business. And the rest of the 50%, mm -hmm. then we were making our own brands and selling in the market. So um, my my journey from nine, in, in, for, you know, for five years I was with DCM uh, as a management trainee, senior management trainee. Now what is called an offshoot of DSCL, you know, DCM Firira. And and I was Shiv Nader, Shiv Nader, who is the founder of HCL. He was 69 batch. I am 70 batch, and Arjun Malhotra was founding managing director, who's my batch. So five years I was with them, and then I joined my joined this Crop Health Products Limited in 1974 as a full-time director. And then the journey started, and and then you know uh, because of this new introduction of new molecules, patented molecule has been my life in this country and protecting intellectual property. So uh, in 2012, uh, uh, Ishahari Sangyo Kaisha Limited, which is a multinational company in Japan, in discovery of new molecules only, they don't produce and sell outside Japan, only in Japan. 
and then they license these products to to large companies all over the world, including Europe and US and China, and they have offices. Uh, they license to a large company in India, uh, four products in 2006 and eight, and these are selling very well right now. One of them is Olala, which is very well known in the in the country today by the farming community. And so I I have been associated with them from 2012, and we are now in the process of registering new products in India, the first of which will come in the first quarter of 2021. And these will be licensed to various partners and alliances in the country uh, for manufacturing and marketing of such, com of such new molecules. And I took over there as a managing director of this company in uh, director in 2016 and managing director in March of this year. And my job really is to lead this initiative and, and bring in these new chemistries and new solutions to the farming community in rural markets in India for various crop segments. And uh, these are all patented and first time introductions in the country and in the world. So it's a great, uh, it's a great learning experience, a great uh, working with technology and technology partners and, and bringing such such things to the farmer is a great challenge and which, which requires really new strategies and new type of thinking. So I hope this gives you some idea of, 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 of what I'm doing. Companies like yours are the people who are really actually interacting with the farmers. Aapka one to one to the, with the farmers both extensively over there. So just, just to understand that, how has the macroeconomic scenario changed overall in past uh, five decades? So, you know, if you see the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, to some extent the 90s, then, you know, rural markets were not in communication with urban India too much. I still mm -hmm. remember the era of lightning calls and waiting at the phone and that lady coming and saying, sir, I'm connecting you and all that, STD booths. And roads were terrible. Much of the roads going into the villages were all kacha roads. And I remember when I used to visit, uh, have been visiting now the almost entire country now, and you know there were you are you are really in a bumpy ride and 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 uh, no air conditioned cars and kacha houses and hardly any electricity and eating at dhabas and um, you know getting dysentery and getting gastroenteritis and 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 and, and uh, uh, being at small hotels and dharamshalas, so. And the farmers also completely illiterate at that time, all, all Anguta shop mostly, not many progressive educated like today. So if you see the past four decades, it has been a great push thing from the corporates and from the government. University people are trying to educate the farmer what to do, educate the dealer how to sell, what, what kind of, what is, what is crop protection chemical, it is a poison, you have to be careful with it. Companies also saying how to use the product and in different languages, imagine in so many languages in the country, you are trying to, you know, in Kerala or Malayalam or Telugu or, you know, Oriya and Punjabi and Gujarati, it's a big challenge. So it used to be, um, it used to be that you have, you are a frontline soldier, whether you are a managing director or you are a salesman, there is no way yeah. that you can sit in your office and do any business. You have to be yes. in the field and you have to confront yeah. The channel partners. Yeah. And so the macroeconomic scene really has has, has now changed. You know, from uh, ever since, of course, the internet has come. But even before that, you had the fax, and then you had STT dialing, and you had slightly better roads. But from that, suddenly, from 2000, and now 2020, in the last 20 years, what has happened in the last 10, 15, 20 years? It has not happened in the last 40, 50 years. So, and the yes. major change yes. there is, A, that the government has put in a lot of money into infrastructure, communications mm -hmm. with the rural population and rural people has increased because not only now because of the net, but even earlier because of many other ways, right? And then you have mechanization happening. So you have tractors and harvesters and all, all many machines and you have education and you have awareness and promotional programs happening in very novel ways. And that, that started the foundation for a new type of macroeconomics. You had NGOs, you had self-help groups, 
you had farmer yes. communities right and you had you had uh, green revolutions in the middle in 19 you know 1980s and when, when the wheat crop mm -hmm. and on paddy crop and on soya bean you know dr swami nathan a great efforts that these people made all of them and you know mnc mm -hmm. brought in new technologies and started to work in the field and followed by large indian companies and also other smaller companies so a whole lot of push happened fertilizer company seed company crop protection company and make an machine making companies all of these fellows went out to you know to meet the 70% population so macro economics changed and now with the net i mean you know if I mean, we have a house in in raniket and if you if you were to travel from kart godam to machkali then there are many many young women who are on scooters you know activas and jupiters and and they are wearing t-shirts and jeans and you know and some mother is sitting at the back or brother or father and uh, you know they 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 want to make something of themselves and uh, you would have never found a woman on the road otherwise in the old times if you were to go to punjab you know just to tell you a story we were we saw a woman and and in, in punjab in muksar uh, mandi and in way back in the 80s so she was you know kind of uh, carrying some agriculture thing in the field and we were demonstrating in the nearby field so we asked her her age she looked wrinkled you know she was working with her husband i think she looked easily 58 60 years old and then she said you know in punjabi that she was 37 years old yes yeah because she was in the sun you know all the time may to july is 45 50 degrees so women in rajasthan women in punjab um, women in gujarat women in karnataka and kerala in paddy fields all of them assisted their family along with the children also their husbands to work mm -hmm. in agriculture and that was a great sacrifice i think we little realized sitting in our homes mm -hmm. that you know we are eating good food and everything but the effort that actually goes into making that food and producing that food is great by the families mm -hmm. who are working farming communities so so you know so that's how it is and so the macro economics in the hill states because now the states have got agriculture on the concurrent list lot of money is going so really speaking today in terms of enam e markets you know you have e chopals from private companies like itc you have e shakti from companies like hindustan weavers who are you know activating engaging actively with customers and with you know people there you have lot of lot of uh, uh, corporate social responsibility initiatives happening in rural india so uh, because of this combined internet smartphones aspirational uh, explosion i would say amongst women especially amongst young educated rural women you know there are rural bpos for insurance rural bpos for medical transcription it's a it's a revolution happening out there depending on which state you are going you know so uh, uh, from you know, so macro has become now very receptive to change you know what i mean but now um, if i have uh, understood over the, the, the entire landscape is changing uh, the, yeah. the the thing which was that the ck pallad mentioned about bottom up pyramid and the, the entire uh, this thing is changing now and i believe yeah, it means inputs yeah. has got a major no role pyramid it's no longer a pyramid because of the emerging middle class 800 yeah. million people yes. by 2030 it's become a diamond you know it's bloating mm. in the middle yes the new concept yes. is that here prahlad's pyramid is now bloating becoming obese becoming fat you know like a with the middle class coming up and, yeah and they want they want a good quality of life they want to earn money they want to do something you know so this is the new area of change emerging demographic so, so you have so much of this thing happening companies like yours which are into agri inputs what are the challenges you face in the market now now the this scenario is already changed the government is at one place talking uh, doubling the income for the farmers there is a while you are doing it doubling the farmer income there is another aspect which is coming to recently we have been talking a lot to stop uh, uh, products coming from imported from china and then you have this covid issue coming in so what kind of challenges the companies like yours are facing you know i was on the 
uh, expert panel of Ernst and Young for doubling farmers' income under the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, along yes. with respected Ashok Dalvi sir, who was uh, spearheading this initiative in Niti Adyo. So you know, hmm. one of the main things is that the challenge is, which is a general challenge, is that the agricultural land holding has come down to 1.08 hectares per culti per farmer who is cultivating zero million farmers. Very few farmers yeah. have got 5 acres, 10 acres or 20 acres mm -hmm. or more, very few. So when you have got only 1.08 hectares, which mm -hmm. is something like 2.5 acres, you know, any crop that you put on it, any crop, vegetable, paddy or wheat or cotton or soybean or oilseed, and you put in the best technology and everything, is not going to make it profitable. So the major challenge, sir, is that today, agriculture is not profitable even at the best of conditions so how do you double farmers mm -hmm. income animal husbandry and poultry and you know uh, cattle and and and, and uh, uh, fisheries and other small trading shops and they are making money from non farm income ajayji has gone mm -hmm. up to over 55% while farm income from mm -hmm. cultivated crop which used to be 70 percent at one time has come down to 45 percent or even less because it's not profitable so this is the biggest challenge because agri input price has gone up fertilizer prices up seed prices of gmo crops or hybrid seeds are up and agrochemicals because of new technology are selling at 4000 rupees a liter or kilo 10000 rupees 20000 rupees of course the dose could be only few grams but so the input mm. cost for the farmer per acre has come to 15,000, 10,000, 12,000. How will he make any money? So the bigger challenge is, and which is I think a little bit of a lesson, that urban marketeers, irrespective of who they are, whether they are FMG, FMCG people or durable people or they are agri input people, they are thrusting mm. technology and urban ideas into the rural mouth like a square peg mm -hmm. in a round hole. So the challenge mm -hmm. really is, yeah, and the son of the farmer is telling, Ki, Papa Ji, Babu Ji, I don't want to do agriculture. I will not yes. make any money. I won't have good house. Mm -hmm. I won't marry a good girl. I won't have a good quality of life. I will hardly ever buy a car and want to talk of going abroad. So thank you very much. I am going to some town, small town, big town or metro and try to find my job opportunity there and make a life for myself. I will send you money mm. home. So the sons mm. of the farmers are going away. And the mm. farmer is selling the land for crores of rupees where infrastructure is coming up. You know, mm. so where is the farmer of to tomorrow is the question I ask. Mm. So what is happening, sir? A very, mm. a very, um, how do you say, critical phase we are passing. The landlord has mm. now got these landless labor from mm. Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand and other places, UP, East UP, and given mm. them the, his land on contract. Mm. So this landless labor is now having a contract of five acres, two acres, whatever, and they are growing wheat or whatever paddy and giving fixed amount of money to the owner, farmer. Mm. So see that while on one hand, new technologies in seed fertilizer and crop protection are coming in. But on the other hand, it is this landless labor type of, un, you know, uneducated type of lot who is controlling the production of farm. So earlier the owner used to know so many things, the land, the farmer land owner. But now this, uh, you know, land owner says, I have given the land on contract, you go and talk to them. So whether you spray pesticide, which is a very dangerous thing, or good hybrid seeds, or you do nutrients, this population of landless people who are now cultivating the land on contract are not likely to spend a lot of money on inputs because they want to make their own money. This is a very big challenge. Fragmented land, not having the youth into farming, and now this landless people cultivating. Third, third challenge, right? Yes. So fourth challenge is adoption of technology. You know, today, multinational companies, government of India, many NGOs, mm -hmm. many startups like AgroStar, and so many others are bringing in new technologies for 
cultivation, new new seeds, new bio agents, bio products, right? But the mm. farmer unfortunately has the same same land. Mm. The land is not going up, and uh, the cooperative farming, other than in Gujarat, is not a great success anywhere else in the country. You know, so the challenge really is mm. that okay, we will we will give you good solutions. Uh, you know, for your for your problems, whether it is a pest, disease, or or weed uh, problem. But at the mm. end of it, the poor man says, "Sir, I'm thankful. I have a good crop, but you know, I don't get a good price because the the fourth challenge is the domination by middlemen. Intermediaries eat away all mm. the profit. Coming down from from mm. the Rani case one time, Kart Goda May, I was stopped by children our car. And in the month of potato harvesting, and they said, "Sir, hard job. Kindly take away all these potatoes as much as you can fill in the car. They are free. You want to give us some charity? Thank you very much. There is no place in the cold storage. Yeah. We are getting one rupee a kilo, which is not even enough the cost of the of the you know katta of the of the bag. So uh, and you know we are buying at forty rupees or thirty five rupees or fifty rupees. You know the the pahadi alu and all that. So yeah. all the middle money." Is eaten up by intermediates, and whether it is by artiers or it is by commission agents or it is by wholesalers or distributors or you know the the cold storage or the truck that brings. So this is a very big challenge that at the end of it, who is our consumer for all these products? Even for a washing machine, even for a for a for a shampoo, and even for an agri input, our our consumer is you know the rural. Rural consumer, and he mm. has to buy it only as disposable income to purchase. He has got mm. wonderful aspirations. He has got good dreams, but he doesn't have money. Therefore, he borrows. He borrows from the artia, which is why the banking system and financial inclusion is not happening. So, uh, and mm. he is for forever in debt. You know, we used to study in school. You will also remember rural indebtedness. It's a mm. perpetual thing. He is borrowing for everything, for marriage, for you know, birth of a child, for all because he has to show to his villagers, he has to maintain his status. Uh, and unfortunately, yes. that is a very big challenge, Ajay ji. There are so many marketing challenges, but you know, marketeers are only looking at how to sell. They are not looking at improving the quality of life of their customer, not being engaged with them, not being involved with them. That is a tragedy. so the we have been talking a lot on this last uh, one decade has been an era of complete new technology which has been coming up data has become a big 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 uh, mover for all kind of decisions and all so how companies like you are using your data analytics in your uh, day to day buying uh, or selling behavior as such you know hindustan lever chairman in his you know in his speech in the agm is on record to say that Even that all our data that we have got of rural consumers mm-hmm. has become obsolete. Oh. Because yes, because a new breed of consumers is coming up. Mm-hmm. So data analytics, data mining, and big mm-hmm. data is today the very foundation of marketing. Mm-hmm. Because without knowing to whom you are selling, what kind of consumer mm-hmm. behavior you are going to encounter, what type of mm-hmm. habits, what type of you know commitment and loyalty you know and 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 stickiness that you will get of brands it is very difficult to do brand management or integrated marketing communication or get a response you know mm. from the in the in the if you have a look at the brand equity uh, you know you know pyramid then you need a type of a repeat purchase you know like life boy or or like uh, you know yes. many other products yes. like that which have become very common you know with uh, with uh, with the consumer so the data today because mm. of the youth rural youth ajay ji will be the driver of tomorrow's rural market rural youth including girls and women are getting educated well so hey but they are becoming graduates some of them in my college where i teach 30% people have come 40% people have come from rural india you know there was this girl called kundan or something like that in my class in mba she was wearing chura you know one day she brought laddus and she said sir i have got married so i said congratulations mm-hmm. 
uh, what will you do? Uh, he said, sir, I have got placement also, but uh, my villagers will not allow me to take up a job. I said, why? You, uh, Aisa kya? No, sir, if I do that, they will break my legs. I said, why? Your husband and you go to Bangalore and now nobody will follow you. They said, no, sir, they will allow him to go, but not me. I said, this is very funny. You go for FBA, but the village won't allow. I said, yes, sir. I mean, I am the most educated girl in my village, but my villagers will not permit my in-laws or my own family. They'll go against me and my husband if I leave the village to do work. Now, this is an extreme. So, you know, there's a dichotomy. So, data analytics of the emerging youth is the base. In our company, we are we have what is called market intelligence gathering. Not only our, I think that every company today which is has got uh, today mechanisms in software and through other means. And there are a lot of research companies who, who are outsourcing data. You can buy that data. So hmm. you have to know, you know, how do you say, Ajayji, you have a gun, which is a product. Then you load the gun, which is the promotion and the product, you know, all the features. And then you shoot at the consumer. But somebody mm. else dies. Your consumer is not dying in rural household. Because rural yes. household is grandfather who may say, yeah. okay, today our crop is good, you can buy the motorcycle, right? And the father mm. who pays for the money, right? And then you have the bhabi and the chachi and the mommy and the young girl who, who are consuming so many things. But somebody else decides, somebody else buys. And at the back of it, some elderly person is there. Because if the crop is failing, he will tell the son, Beta, I promised you, but no motorcycle this year. Right? Hmm. So there are multiple forces. And until you know, your gun will go and shoot somebody else. So data enables you to get your consumer in your target. See him like a picture. And internet enables you to talk to him, to see him. But, to engage but do you, do you do you think we should depend so much on the data front as such? Sir, data is an enabler. Just an enabler, yes. Okay. An enabler, like a fax machine, like a typewriter or a computer. It is not a solution. Hmm. So you garbage in, garbage out. You, you, you will get so much of data that you have to have a mechanism to yeah. sift, to, to mine it, to analyze it, you know, the data analytics. And then, then put it into a marketing plan. Then put it into strategy. Then put it. Then train your people to understand that data. You know, you can't go into the house of a rural woman in a rural house with a questionnaire and mm -hmm. say, "Okay, I want to ask you some questions." They will throw you out. You know, it's very difficult to get data which is current from rural markets, unlike urban markets. You know, you can do it on telephone. You can do it on net. But with rural people. Face to face is a much better way, despite digital mm. initiatives where we are going. A face to face always works for a big ticket buying. So data analytics will show you the roadmap, it will show you the behavior, but you have to do all the other actions, you know. You can't so, depend on data to get you the goal. So digitization is overall bringing a lot of growth to the markets. So it is changing the overall landscape of buying behavior is con constantly changing. The aspirational level is going on. People are buying new products because they've been exposed to the digital things which are coming to them on a regular basis. So how has that scenario changed? And in your view, uh, at one point of time, women used to play very, very integral uh, part in the all kind of decisions making. So what do you see that uh, the impact of a women in the decision making? Yeah, you are very right. Digitalization has changed the battlegrounds. Today, uh, women have smartphones. Everybody has yes. smartphones. 5G will come. So today, uh, mm. it may not enable purchase, but definitely it will enable impartment of knowledge, engagement with yes. the customer, like, you know, the Tushan, the, 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 Khan Khajura Tashan uh, program of Hindustan mm -hmm. people. You are aware of that yeah. in Bihar. Yeah, where, where they were, uh, the, 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 the old lady had a phone and you know, she can give a missed call to Hindustan Lever call center and ask for a drama yeah. or a call, all that you know. So, digitalization, digitalization will help you reach your customer. It will help mm -hmm. you convey your message. 
it will help you engage with them so people like amazon and flipkart low ticket they will be buying also e-commerce but a digitalization but digitalization is having a great impact on rural services mm -hmm. today for example the siemens x-ray machine or a philips x-ray machine is carried by a villager who is trained by the company he goes into mm -hmm. dadaji's house dadaji is not well he takes an x-ray the thing goes back to head office a report comes from the radiologist then mm. he goes back to dadaji explains the x-ray leaves the x-ray and the report all in the house all mm. through digitalization yes. so digitalization yes. is helping travel it is helping banking it is it is it is assisting uh, uh, cyber cafes it is assisting uh, weather forecasting it is assisting forward you know pricing of commodities it is like from enam and on you know e chopal and so many other platforms it mm. so it is keeping everybody informed about what to do when to do what is available where is it available at what price mm. it is available but digitalization is not creating a need it is okay. not creating demand it is okay. not it is not solving a problem mm. it is at the best an aid and we have to be careful with it because it will dance you know like a very good looking woman but that is all that will happen and you will spend a lot of money and come out mm. but nothing more will happen because that is what digitalization is mm. you will keep on okay. spending money on it so in rural markets ajay ji despite all the glamour we still need to blend the old with the new mm. we need to have face to face contact talk to your customer that is the mantra of rural marketing digitalization yes. get you there but when i you know i used to travel 2 3 1000 kilometers per 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 month in non air conditioned cars uh, for agro import marketing right from 1970s right up to today and if they were talking to distributors and dealers and and farmers and other other stakeholders and it is only by talking because rural people want to know mr company who are you why have you come here you just want to say something to us you are not involved with us mm. you are not a part of our life you know you don't have any sympathy or empathy with us so go to hell so mm. that is why very few companies are today in rural markets why because not that they don't have the money everybody has the money but because relationship building empathizing with rural customer digitalization cannot do yeah. it is an impersonal type of communication mm. despite video conferencing so we should not look at digitalization as a panacea for all the problems it is the enabler it will empower mm. it will help and assist but the job should mm. be done in the way that the territory demands or the product demands mm. that is my 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 suggestion yeah. because i remember while i was having a discussion with uh, mr sanjay panekri and he categorically mentioned ki agar mujhe agar rural mein jana hoga to digital data and everything i'll keep in mind but if i have to go to them either i'll look at going one to one or the best medium i will look into is maybe going on with a tv so tv is one right. i may touch otherwise i'll focus more on getting on one to one with the villagers sir kya sir ek रूरल 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 कस्टमर टीवी से ज्यादा ज्यादा इन्फ्लुएंस नहीं होता है आई हर्ट संजय जी मे बी एफ एम पीजी ओके इट क्रिएट अवेयरनेस कॉस्टली मीडियम ऑल्सो ड्यूरिंग द इन एग्रो इनपुट द लोकल केबल टीवी वाला एंड एट द टाइम वेन द फार्मर्स हैव यू नो आर नॉट इन द फील्ड दैट इज वेन दे वे लाइक टू सी सम कृषि दर्शन और समथिंग बट जनरल टीवी फॉर वीमेन एंड चिल्ड्रन मे बी ओके so i you know i mean i can just tell you that in shahabad markanda for example in haryana the we were there and you know we had a kirtan mandli from pau and hau universities all these ladkis and ladkas wearing saffron colored robes and doing tan 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 shri ram jai ram then we had a free medical dental camp from ron polenk of france the multinational right and then we had our product display and then we had a yo yo you know so we were moving the yo yo and the children are saying what is this we wanted so we said get your papa here and we will give it to you so 
the farmer is brought and the farmer says why don't you give him the yo yo he says sir you buy our product which is at cost and we will tell you how to use it for your wheat crop it will give you fantastic result and with that the yo yo is free so that was the kind of promotion to get your people together and talk to them convince them persuade them and solve their problem you know so mm. so these these uh, these things cannot be changed by digitalization to yes. some extent yes but not to a very major extent in agro input marketing spurious yes. products are a very major issue major issue you know people yes. are 3500 crores worth of spurious products and duplicate products are sold in this country Oh, that's a big and, number. Yes, and the government is fully aware of it, and mm. they are trying to solve it. You know, they are making new acts and making them very, very kind of uh, criminal and penal provisions over there. You know, but the balance has to be struck. But you know, in India, as you know, everybody copies everything very fast. So new molecules from abroad, and I am managing director of one such company, are very hesitant to bring in new molecules into the country. Yes. because they say that we will spend 1500 crores in discovery invention patenting and introduction of the product and in mm. two years some small fellow in india will copy it yes he and he will start selling at some atrocious price and our product life cycle will be completely eroded the value will go that is a that is a that is a question which the government has to reckon with with the associations and with the stakeholders you know so, so these are china for example the so china chinese goods are coming into this country china people are coming into agrochemical and crop protection area 70% of intermediate for crop protection agri inputs are coming from china and we are having so, chinese chinese problem on the border so tomorrow if something goes wrong something yes, goes so, wrong we cannot hmm. so that is why so, make in india yeah go ahead go ahead but then uh, so i i'm so sure that the global development is going to make lot of impact and, and there has been lot of uh, things which has been discussed make in india make in india do you think ki agri inputs pe jo aap logo ka itna bada market hai aur you are importing so many things is india ready for all these things yes sir we are a 6 billion dollar kind of market for agrochemical half is export half is indian uh, domestic market 3 billion approximately mm-hmm. तो क्या हो रहा है कि अभी मेक इन इंडिया में अगर आप दहेज जाओ अखिलेश्वर जाओ गुजरात जाओ आंध्र प्रदेश एंड तमिलनाडु मोर एंड मोर इंडियन कंपनीज आर गियरिंग अप टू मेक बैकवर्ड इंटीग्रेशन इन अंडर मेक इन इंडिया दे आर टाइंग अप विद लार्ज कंपनीज अब्रॉड जैपनीज कंपनीज यूएस कंपनीज यूरोपियन कंपनीज इवन चाइनीज कंपनी एंड दे आर गोइंग टू गेट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मेक द प्रोडक्ट एंड एक्सपोर्ट एंड यूज इट फॉर इंडिया तो बट सर इट टेक्स टाइम but the these are high technology mm. high capital cost kind of plants they require good manpower they require environmental permissions they require all kinds of safety net and they require marketing and production capabilities so it will take maybe how many 5 years at least by that time i think that self sufficiency target set by yes. our honorable prime minister of yes. having you know self sufficiency and self sustenance we mm. may come closer to it but mm. dependent putting all our eggs in chinese basket is not a good idea i think our policy makers should actually seriously think that our pharmaceutical industry our agrochemical industry for other 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 very important industries their dependence on chinese raw material should be reduced gradually and converted so, into make in india in the indian manufacturing areas and i think so, that indian people are ready they have the capability they have the money but mm. we, we need a push and i think that push has started but it will take time to gather momentum so in you know, the etc can do it but smaller companies msmes you know who are facing covid 19 problems difficult for them to actually get into new plants and new technologies and new money where the profits will come only much later na so that's a challenge so in your view uh, for government talking more on uh, self reliance especially in your field so when, when i look at the chemical industry as a whole whether agri inputs are required or pharmaceutical we require minimum 5 years 
I mean, that's the time which we require that self-dependency of uh, these agri inputs. We'll be able to uh, market, are we able, able to manufacture those kind of components? And most importantly, what you're trying to say is that government needs to intervene into the overall uh, scenario for to help the MSMEs to produce those kind of goods. Am I correct? Yes, sir. We need from the government and the stakeholders a yes. make in India roadmap, mm -hmm. chemical make in India roadmap, electronics made in India roadmap, telecom made in India roadmap, right? Pharmaceutical made in India roadmap. So different variables get, will go into it. You know, whether it is technology or it is it is resources or it is land or it could be, you know, contract manufacturing, whatever. But mm -hmm. different roadmap. One roadmap is not going to work for making a toy and making an agrochemical. They are different yes. things. Same roadmap yes. cannot work for make, making a leather handbag oh. or for making pharmaceuticals. So I think that it is a joint effort. It is not government alone that can do it. People have mm. to be together in a task force for their own own sectors. And I'm sure if they work hard on the roadmap, five years definitely will show some visible improvement in the self-sustenance area in India, in manufacturing. Sir, echo chain, like, yes, sir, how has, the, how has the distribution channel changed overall in the current scenario? Sir, you have e enam e-com, you're talking yeah. Pele kya hai, sir, we had a distributor in Abhor called Kalu Ram Bihari Lal. Uska roj, sir, ek uh -huh. crore rupi aata tha. Roj ek crore rupi aata tha. Transactional, dena dena. Mm. Or State Bank of India, mm. extension counter tha. I'm talking of 1978 ka ek crore. Aaj pata nahi kitna. So, answer. Uh -huh. And he was a pakka artia. That means a pakka commission agent. You know, there's a kacha artia and a pakka artia. He had over 10,000 farmer households linked to his shop for generations. They would come and give the gold, they would come and give the jewelry, and they would take mm -hmm. the money. You know, many farmers would come to his to the shop, mm -hmm. drink a cup of tea, and by the time you can wink your eye, he would get 5,000, 10,000 rupees, 20,000, and he walk out of the shop. No bank mm -hmm. can, can change that. So, sir, he, Arthias became the distributor preferred distributors of agrochemicals, fertilizers, seeds, even some durable products because they had the money. Mm. So they, they, for their sons, they put up these distributing outlets, Voltas and, you know, such other uh, Philips and so many others, you know, and agrochemicals. Mm. And similarly, you had distributors and every, today you have 300,000 type of outlets in the country on, you know, the rural, on the, on the agri areas. But what has changed is that with new technology, the distributor himself has to learn a lot. So today, distributor, dealer, retailer, he without him, you cannot sell seed, fertilizer, or agrochemical. Because for one simple reason, that he has to give credit. Hmm. No farmer buys any material on cash. Very little, maybe hmm. 10%. So he hmm. has to give credit to the farmer, the farmer will pay him back with either the crop or cash after the harvest. So bank cannot give that credit because the crop may fail. The private people cannot do it. The retail, mm -hmm. rural retail cannot manage it, which is why rural retail mall has failed. It is only these RCR commission agents and maybe some bank who can manage to extend this um, rural credit to the farmer. So distribution has changed. ENAM, for example, in the recent reforms in the Essential Commodities Act and 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 EPIDA, you know, today you can the farmer who could not sell his produce directly to anybody today he can sell anywhere he wants. The notification is out. So the potato fellow who was giving one rupee a kilo can come to Delhi and sell for ten rupees a kilo if he can manage. He can go on the net. Through ENAM markets, about 10-15% of the transaction is today by ENAM. Mm. If today the infrastructure, you know what is called collection of goods at the village, means mm. you put up storage centers at the village, you, you put up, you know, acha alu, badi alu, bad alu, pakawa alu, that kind of segmentation at the village level, 
the purchasing the buying agent picks it up takes it into enam you know through some kind of servicing and connects the farmer to the buyer so distribution of e-commerce is increasing about 500 hits a day in rural india are of e-commerce buying three girls in bangalore i found when i went there they had scooties and they were living in a pg next mm-hmm. to where we were staying so I, i happened to ask one of them we what is what are you doing he said sir hum tino ek village ke hain aur humko amazon ne kisi agency ke through last mile connectivity ke liye employ kiya hai wo ipad leke jaate yeah. hain village ki aunty ke paas village mein wo aunty se kehte hain mata ji aapko kya chahiye dekho ye saadi hai ye blouse hai ye bag hai ye khane peene ki cheeze aunty order something worth 500 rupees 800 rupees they take the order take the money put the money into a collection center the money goes to amazon mm. the product comes after about 3 days 4 days or 1 week and they go and deliver the product to that aunty ji last mile connectivity so this is a experiment being done by e-commerce mm. people it start also i think so i would say that as and you know mm. they are getting 15000 rupees plus some incentive each one of them they are saying uncle ji we are very happy because mm. we are away from the our village we are independent we have we can enjoy our life and we are earning money all through last mm-hmm. mile distributing connecting strategy of these people so i would say that today the uh, uh, you know with many initiatives of agro star and many other startups in agri you will have mm-hmm. a new segment of distribution coming up so progressive mm-hmm. farmers progressive rural people will rely on startups and e platforms including e nam to give them the products at affordable prices to reach them that products in about a week's time or even less to educate mm-hmm. them and provide them services on extension and advice in the field if required and they may charge mm-hmm. something or it may be free this area is sir growing up i i my my feeling is that in one 10 years time the e commerce part of rural india will become mm-hmm. significant maybe 30 40% of lot of purchase of lot kind of items especially yes. low ticket items you know yes. the t-shirt and the and the jeans and the handbag and the cosmetics and the mm-hmm. and the shampoo and the hair oil all this will mm-hmm. go through e-commerce because they are e- because they are low ticket low maybe ticket. high ticket items like refrigerator or something maybe not going or like uh, you know motorcycle or but even pesticide you know coromandel murugupa group they've got over a thousand of their own french retail store right in the front they've got computers over there touch computer mm-hmm. farmer comes mm-hmm. it is telugu he presses he on his own he goes on the screen touches the con- con- uh, thing enters his id so the computer says what is your problem he says mai karela ugata hu mere karele mein keeda laga hai wo kehta hai kaun batao keeda kaisa he writes on the computer the computer mm. gives them the advice there is mm. a local person there agri assistant who can help him and then he mm. says what to do so they give him a lot of product choice mm. choice from mnc choice from coromandel choice from other and he can buy that product or the people can visit his field the visit can be free or it can be at some charge and he is exporting karela left right and center very happy man he is. so such a, such front line you know shops or outlets computerized with internet facility with connectivity enablement will come up all over india and they will be in last mile touch with the customer and back end touch with the distributor or with the company it will be a fantastic distribution experience and learning in the next 5 to 10 years in this country thank you yeah. so much space which is for the new entrepreneurs to get into the market there's a lot of opportunity which is lying the startup uh, domain and uh, so much of insights you have given so we have a limited time if you have to just conclude in a uh, few minutes what would be your advice to the youth or the new startup people who are getting into this uh, markets 95% of the companies which enter rural markets fail this is okay. data this is not my saying data 
why do they fail because they they have an idea it's a good idea then they borrow money from these uh, angel and you know uh, brokers and and pe fellows then after 3 mm -hmm. years those people come back and say please give us our money back they can't pay because it has not matured what is wrong is that they don't have a sustaining business model the idea is very good mm -hmm. and now they have to repay back the money they can't do it and then they go into this urban people go into the rural market and they talk to rural customers and they say please buy our product that can never be an urban product can never sell in rural india until it is appropriate and all that you know the so product management for rural india is quite different mm -hmm. so i would say that if startups major problem is a not a self sustaining business model and over borrowing and reliance on debt you have to have time you got to go step by step you got to be in engagement with your customer and you can't make profit very fast so my advice would be rely on technology but in india rely on relationships rely on district by district working and not national working don't copy multinational companies go by your own team and on the ground kind of data mining and go slow and don't borrow money unnecessarily and make big houses and you know go on yes. the television say you are a big big unicorn that unicorn will just fail yes. so you just have to be very very cautious conservative and you have to be sensible then i'm sure you will succeed yes so this is what so, i feel thank you so much thank you so much i think you gave a very fantastic uh, advice to the new entrepreneurs who are planning to get into the rural markets because the rural markets really require a lot of patience it requires a lot of insights and data analytics what you are doing has to be uh, you have to be really uh, classifying in what are the domains or what are territories you're going to be working on so thank you so much for being with me and uh, pleasure talking to you thank you very much ajit ji for the opportunity thank I'm you so happy. much bye bye thank you sir thank you friends for watching some interesting insights from professor chandra sabhawal rural marketing has been constantly talking to market leaders who have excelled themselves in various fields friends in case you have any rural marketing questions please feel free to mail me our leadership council will be more than happy to answer your queries and please 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 do not forget to share and subscribe stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you next week thank you and bye bye